Hi, welcome back to our channel and the video you're about to watch is another free lesson from our online course and this time it's for beginners. We'll get into the After Effects UI and I also teach you how to, how to animate. So if you want to get into After Effects and it's your first time to animate and you don't know where to start, then maybe this video is for you. So let's get to it. So when I started After Effects, it was so intimidating for me. And I think one of the reason is that uh, when you open After Effects, you have nothing. If you open Photoshop, uh, what you'll see first is a canvas. If you open Illustrator, you'll have an artboard. So you know exactly what, what to do next, right? You, you can draw on the canvas or the artboard. You know what to do. In After Effects, when you open After Effects, you have nothing. It's empty. You actually need to create your first composition. And you can think of the composition like it's a canvas in Photoshop or it's like an artboard in Illustrator. So let's open After Effects, and this is the first thing that you'll see. Your most recently opened project files would appear here. So now, for now, let's create uh, let's create a new project. So click this new project button. So as I've mentioned before, when you start After Effects, you have no composition. You actually need to create your first composition. So there are two ways to do that. You can click this button, or go here in the top. Uh, in the menu bar, click Composition and click New Composition. It just do the, the same thing. So if you're using the newer version of After Effects, I'm using After Effects 2022. So uh, you will have this uh, button, but in older versions, you don't have that. So go here and click New Composition. So it's going to open this Composition Settings panel. So you have here uh, different presets, different resolutions. So what I'm uh, using is the HDTV 1080 29.97. So this is the standard resolution. The width is 1920 pixels and the height is 1080 pixels. The frame rate is 29.97. So you might be wondering why that frame rate. Um, it's because uh, the older TVs uh, use that frame rate and it's still being used as a standard in in making in making videos so i'm using this 29.97 but you can already consider this as a uh, 30 fps so click ok so we have created a composition so before i proceed uh, let me explain about workspaces so if you go here at the top right you can see this uh, double arrow so click that and you'll have different options. So what these are, these are uh, workspaces. Workspaces are the different uh, layout in the UI. So currently I'm on standard, but if I click color, it would change the layout uh, in, in After Effects. So that you and I are looking at the same thing, just click on the standard. So uh, if you go through here, these are the different presets, click this standard. So it's going to go back to the standard UI. So now let's proceed. In the left side, this is the project panel. As I've mentioned before, all the uh, elements that you import in After Effects, it's going to appear here. The compositions too would also appear here. Since we created our first composition, you could see it here now, uh, Comp1. And this icon, this... Uh, symbolizes that it's a composition. So we're now inside comp one. So this is our uh, comp. Uh, you can think of this as the canvas. So we can zoom in. So the shortcut to zoom in is command plus on a Mac. It's control plus on Windows. It's command minus on a Mac. It's control minus on a Windows. So this is our timeline. All of the layers in this comp would also appear here, but currently we have nothing, so it's currently empty. So let's uh, create a shape. So above here, here are your drawing tools. Uh, the, 
what you need to focus your attention is on these three different tools. You have the rectangle tool, pen tool, and um, the text tool. So if you want to create text, you're going to use this tool. So now let's create a shape. Let's first use the pen tool. So I've clicked the pen tool. And this is the settings for the that pen tool. The stroke is it's empty and the fill is in this color. So let's create a, a shape. So I'm going to click here for my first point and just create a shape. So as I finish the shape, it immediately creates a layer right here. So now let's uh, deselect this layer. So the shortcut to deselect is F2 on your keyboard. Or if you have selected this, the other way to deselect it is just uh, select an empty space in your timeline and that would deselect it. But I prefer pressing F2 so that I don't accidentally click on anything. So the shortcut for the selection tool, so currently I'm on pen tool, right? So if I click, if I want to select this, I can't do that because I'm currently on my pen tool, right? So if I'm gonna click, it's gonna create a new shape. As you can see, it's gonna create a new shape. So let's, and I'm gonna undo. So to undo, that's Command Z on a Mac, it's Control Z on a Windows. So to go back to my selection tool, click this. This is the selection tool or the shortcut in your keyboard that's the uh, V. So now I'm on selection tool, I could select. So I'm gonna click this. So I have uh, selected that. Currently my anchor point is right here. What if I want to change the anchor point? Uh, you need to click on the anchor point tool or the shortcut for that is the, the Y on your keyboard. So if I'm gonna press Y, uh, if you look at my cursor, it has change the icon there's an icon that indicates that i'm now on the anchor point tool so hold click and drag the anchor point and place it uh, anywhere that you want if you want to place this on the center the shortcut for that is command option and home for mac users and that's control alt home for windows Just in case you don't have the home key, so if you're using a Mac and you don't have the home key, uh, what you can do is go here on the layer, go to transform and click this center anchor point in layer content. It's going to center the anchor point. So now let's deselect this. So I press F2. Now let's try the different, uh, the shape tool. So this one is uh, currently a rectangle. If I hold click, it's going to open the different options. There's ellipse, star tool, and polygon. Uh, but for now, let's just create a simple rectangle. So currently my stroke is empty. So if I click this, you can choose the color of your stroke. And you could also choose how thick the stroke is. So currently it's 10 pixels. So now let's create a rectangle and let's deselect this. So as you can see, my rectangle has a stroke. Let's undo that. So I wanna remove the stroke. So to remove the stroke, click this stroke text and then click this, none. So it's gonna remove the stroke. The same is also true if you want to have a stroke with no fill. So click this fill word to uh, select none to make it uh, empty. So for now, I just want the, the fill to be right like that. So now let's create our rectangle. So let's deselect this. I'm gonna press V, selection tool, and I'm gonna click this. So currently it's here. Now let's bring this to center. Let's use the shortcut. It's Command Option Home or Control Alt Home. Now it's at the center. Now let's de delete this. Just click uh, backspace on your keyboard or delete on a Mac. So as you can see, as we create the shape, it immediately adds here in the timeline. So we now have a layer, a shape layer. And shape layers have uh, different properties. So we can expand or collapse this uh, using this arrow icon here. If I'm gonna click this, it's going to collapse. If I'm gonna click it again, it's going to expand. 
So under the shape layer, we have contents and transform. So for now, let's collapse the contents and let's expand the transform. These are the different properties of this layer. So it has an anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Now let's try to move this around. So I'm going to click and hold and drag and move this around. And as I move this around, you'll notice that the values in the position also changes. So this signifies the coordinates of the position of, of this layer. So if I move it here, you'll see that the coordinates here changes. I could also change the coordinates here manually. So for example, I'm going to click drag this. And it will also change the position here visually in, in my composition. So the, this first value, this symbolizes the, the x value or the movement uh, in the uh, horizontal plane. And this one symbolizes the y axis, which is the movement uh, in the vertical plane. So if I move this back and forth, it's going to move horizontally. If I'm going to move this, it's going to adjust vertically. So if you want to be precise in your values, you would want to manually encode it right here. Same with the scale. We can increase the scale to 180% and it's going to also change here in our viewer. Or if I'm going to adjust here, as you can see in, in the properties the scale changes its value. So currently it's not locked, right? I could uh, scale this up or down. So if you want to retain the shape, hold the shift key as you click the this bounding box so that it, it just uh, scales up but retains its shape. Now let's try to rotate this. In order to rotate this, we need to click the rotate tool here, or the shortcut for that is W on your keyboard. And you'll see that rotation icon, meaning now we, can, we could rotate this. So I'm going to click and drag, and now we could rotate this. And then you could see as I rotate the values for the rotation also changes. So now the anchor point is at the center. So when I rotate this, the object would revolve around the anchor point. So if we're going to change the anchor point, so I'm going to click Y because this is the anchor point tool. Now I'm going to click and drag this to around here. Now let's go back to our rotation tool. So click W and now let's uh, rotate this. You can see that it would now rotate on the anchor point around the anchor point. So now let's uh, undo this and uh, let's bring that to the center again. Now let's explore further the timeline. So this is our timeline. And if you could see this, there's F here, this zero colon zero zero F. That means this is the frames. So this one, this means this is uh, the fifth frame. So one, two, three, four, five. This is the tenth frame. So you could zoom in and zoom out. You could uh, here to zoom in, click this icon to zoom in time. So here now you could see the individual frames. Click this icon to zoom out. So here this is this this is the one second mark. This one is the two second mark. This one is the three second mark. So because we are using the 29.97, or we could just round it off to uh, 30, at one second mark, this is already 30 frames. So from this to here, that's around 30 frames. So now let's try to, to animate. So let's start at the, let's start at frame 10. And let's go here on our, uh, the properties under the transform for our layer. Uh, let's just rename this layer. You can rename this by clicking the layer and click uh, the return key on your keyboard or enter, and then just uh, type any, uh, so I'm just gonna rename this as 
uh, layer 1. So if you could see this icon, this stopwatch icon, it means that property is animatable. So for now, let's click the rotation uh, stopwatch icon right here. Uh, let me click that. So what happens is as I click that icon, uh, this diamond icon here is automatically created. This is what we call a keyframe. So what it does is After Effects recorded the value, rotation value in time that at frame 10, the rotation value of this layer is 356.4 degrees. So let's just change this, okay? Just for simplicity, I'm just gonna bring this back again to zero. So now we have recorded that on frame 10, there's a keyframe here that's zero degrees. So now let's move forward in time and let's add here at the one second mark. And now let's change the rotation. So I'm just going to rotate this. And as you can see, as I rotated, it automatically creates a different diamond icon. So a different keyframe. So what it does is it recorded, After Effects recorded that in this specific time, at one second mark, the value of the rotation for layer one would be negative 44 degrees. So now let's traverse our timeline. So uh, let's drag this. This is what we call uh, the playhead. So let's drag this. And as you can see, it now animates. So basically what it does, what After Effects does, is on frame 10, the value is zero degrees. And at one second mark or frame 30, this is at negative 44 degrees. And what it does is it automatically creates the in-betweens, right? From this would animate from zero to negative 44. So now let's zoom out our timeline and we can see this is a long video. Uh, the, the, the whole thing is up to here. This is around eight seconds. So I'm gonna click space bar. So it's going to preview the animation and it's still gonna continue on even though there's no animation right here. It's because uh, the whole preview area or what we call the work area is until here at eight seconds. So let's drag the work area here. It's gonna be in the icon. So now hold click and drag to around here. So that when I preview this, so I'm gonna click space again. It's just going to loop around that area. So the shortcut to adjust your uh, workspace is just click N on your keyboard and that will change the endpoint of your uh, work area. If you press B, that's gonna change the starting point of your work area to where your playhead is. So for now, I'm just gonna adjust it back. So now that we have created the keyframes, so currently the animation is from frame 10 to frame 30. Now, once this is created, you could select the keyframe and you can adjust it. If you want the animation to be longer, so you could just extend this until two seconds maybe. And then it's going to make the animation longer. If you want the animation to be faster, you can bring them closer to each other. And now the, the time spent for that animation from zero degrees to negative 44 is only this amount. So it's gonna be fast. So now let's bring this back again to the one second mark. So now let's add more keyframe to this. So we, the work area is too small, right? Uh, we don't have much to work around. So let's adjust our workspace. Uh, maybe let's just bring this to four, the four second mark. So now let's move forward in time, maybe around here. And let's click this icon, this diamond. So what it does is it created a new keyframe. And the value that it recorded is still negative 44. So if I'm gonna traverse through the timeline, you'll see that from this keyframe to this keyframe, there's no movement. Because 
the value for this is negative 44 and the value of this is negative 44. Now, if you're going to create the in-betweens here, that's always going to be negative 44. So that is the reason why you don't see a movement. Now let's move forward in time and now let's rotate this again. Let's uh, try something around here. So it's going to be, uh, the value would be 84 degrees. So now let's just label for, uh, so that I could explain this further, uh, let's label our keyframes. Let's name this as keyframe A, this one as keyframe B, this one as keyframe C, and this one as keyframe D. And now let's traverse through our timeline and we'll see that from keyframe A to keyframe B, there's movement. But from keyframe B to keyframe C, there's no movement. And it moves again from keyframe C to keyframe D. So this here, this is the pause because keyframe B and keyframe C, they have the same value. So now let's adjust our work area so it would only preview here. Now click the space, uh, space bar on your keyboard. And it's going to look like that. Now if you want to adjust the pause, right? Uh, if you want it to pause for only a shorter time. So I'm going to select both of this keyframe and then adjust it here. So now the pause is only this, uh, this small space in time. So if I want to make the pause longer, so I'm just going to select both of this and extend it here. So let's adjust the work area to be until here. And now let's preview this. So now let's bring this uh, back here. So what if we delete keyframe C? So I'm going to uh, delete this. Okay, and now let's preview this. So as you can see, there is no pause anymore because we have deleted keyframe C. So if we're going to uh, plot out the values, so this one is zero degrees, this one is negative 44 degrees, and this one is 84 degrees. So now what After Effects does is it automatically creates the in-betweens. So now it has that continuous movement because we have removed keyframe C. So let's undo that and let's bring keyframe C again. Now it has the pause because from keyframe B, this is negative 44 and keyframe C is negative 44 still. So here there's no movement. So once we have created this, again, we could adjust the timing. We could make it um, faster here. We could make it longer. So now let's preview this. So now let's animate a different property. So what we have animated is the rotation. Now let's animate the position. So let's click this again. And now let's decide when in the timeline we're going to start. So let's just say around this time. So let's click the stopwatch icon for the position. So it recorded the position in time. So here at frame 10, the position is this. Now let's move forward in time, uh, maybe around uh, here. And currently I'm on my rotation tool. I'm gonna click V so that I'm back to my selection tool. And I'm gonna click drag this. And as you can see, it's gonna have this uh, line with this uh, dots, so if I'm gonna zoom in. See, you can see that uh, dots. You can see that this now animates in time, right? So it has the position and rotation animation. So for now, I'm just gonna select all of the rotation keyframes and I'm just gonna bring this out in the uh, work area so that it won't appear in our preview. So from this point, this is the recorded position and at this point, this is now the rec recorded position, which is here. And now the in-betweens here, it automatically creates the, the in-between. So that's what um, After Effects does. So let me preview this. So now let's bring the rotation keyframes again back here. And now we could adjust the timing so we could have the rotation anima animation start at a later point in time or at a sooner point in time. 
So let's preview this. It's going to rotate, then move, then rotate again. Or we could have this uh, at a later time. So we could also keep on moving this rectangle. So if I want this rectangle to pause, right? So I need to have this, the, the same value of this keyframe. So I could select this keyframe or and I could copy and paste or click this diamond icon. And that would uh, create a keyframe of that same value. So now I have uh, what I call a, a stopper. Now I'm going to move forward in time and move this to uh, anywhere that you want. For example, here. And now let's preview this. So as you can see, it paused around here because this keyframe and this keyframe, they have the same value. So this is our, our pause. The position here doesn't move. Now, now that we have this, we could adjust the timing. Or if I delete this, there won't be a pause, right? It would continually move. And as you can see, when I deleted that, um, it's not anymore a straight line. And we have a base handle right here. Now you could also adjust the, the curve. So even before, I'm going to just undo it and have it like here. Uh, you could see that this have a base handle as well. So I'm going to click this. This one would toggle the transparency. It's going to go back to, to black. If you want to have it transparent, you could click this and it's going to be transparent. But for now, so we could see this handle, right? This handle would adjust the curve if you need a curve. So if I'm going to click this, this one symbolizes the keyframes. So this one is our starting point here, right? So if I click this, you'll notice that it has this bigger circle. You could adjust the handle. And here I could also adjust the handle so that it's it's a curve. So now let's hide this layer. To hide that, you can uh, go here and this uh, eye icon, just click that and that's going to hide that layer. So now let's create a text. And let's click this uh, T icon. This is for text. And you'll have here the character. So if you have a smaller screen, you might not be able to see the whole thing. So here we have the effects and presets, libraries, align, paragraph, and character. So if you have a smaller screen, maybe it's hidden, you could click this double arrow right here and uh, you can choose the character. The character is the settings for your uh, text tool. So currently, this is the font. And uh, it's bold, and this is the font size, and all other settings are here. So I'm just going to click anywhere on screen, and then let's type a text. So for now, I'm just going to type uh, test. So once you're finished with that, press F2, or just click anywhere. Uh, so F2 doesn't work with text. I'm pressing F2. It's not deselecting. So to deselect this, uh, click anywhere in the timeline, in an empty space in the timeline, and it's deselected. Now let's click V for selection so I could select the text and click this. So currently the anchor point is here. Now let's uh, click the shortcut again, which is um, Command Option Home or Control Alt Home to bring it to the center, and now it's here. Now the text and the shape layer. So I could expand, they have similar properties. So I could expand the, the text layer by clicking this arrow and I have text and transform. So I'm gonna expand transform and it will have the same properties, anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. So we haven't tested the opacity yet. So opacity, if I lower it, it's gonna be transparent. If it's 100, it's going to uh, be like 100% in, in color or the, the opacity of that of that layer. So you could change the font here. You could choose a different font. And in the same way that we animated the shape, we could also animate the text. You could create a keyframe for the position. 
Uh, maybe start it uh, off screen and then move forward in time. Maybe at around uh, here at frame 20, it's going to reach the center. Uh, if you hold the space bar here in the uh, viewer panel here in our composition, hold the space bar. So that's going to the icon or the cursor is going to change the head. It's going to, uh, meaning you could pan the the viewer. So once I release the space bar, it goes back to my recently active uh, tool. So it's currently on selection tool. So now let's preview this. Let's go back to the zero mark and preview this. Click spacebar on your keyboard and that's it. That's the animation. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And if you want to learn more, then check out uh, our course. The link is in the description below. So in the course, uh, we would start from the basics. We'd start from minimal difficulty, and then we would gradually increase the complexity over time. So by the end of the course, you would have a better grasp in animating in After Effects. So if you're interested with that, uh, then check out the link in the description below.